Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The True Path Entrepreneur, your guide to living your purpose and growing a freedom-based business you love. I'm your host, Beth Weinstein. I'm a transformational business coach for current and aspiring entrepreneurs, helping you align with your purpose and grow your business so you can help more people, profit with your passion, and have a thriving business you love, working from anywhere you want. And in today's interview, we get to hear from Shamika Tankerson. Hey, Shamika, how are you? Hi, Beth. How are you? Hi. Thank you so much for being with us. Shamika is coming to us from Southern California. Shamika is a master sales strategist, international best-selling author, award-winning business strategist who's been featured on Forbes, ABC, CNN, and CBS, the creator of Authority Selling Method, a powerful yet simple system for having conversations and making offers that serve and sell. And she's the go-to woman when you want to learn how to sell more, period. Known for her dynamic take action style and priceless straight talk, Shamika empowers clients all over the globe to set fire to their fears, ditch self-doubt, sell more and charge more and own it with zero apologies. I love that. I love it. I'm like, yeah, zero apologies. So um, Shamika, we'll talk a little bit more about all that soon, but just tell people, how did you get on this path to, um, you know, becoming this, this sales strategist and, the, uh, you know, helping people with their business? So I'm definitely one of those people who was kind of running from her purpose. People would tell me all the time, you should focus on sales. And I'm like, I don't want to be known as a sales coach or person. I want to help people with their life and their purpose and who they're being. And so the journey for me actually started, um, I had a business, right? And that I lost everything. So here I am, this high achieving woman who's like, status was everything to me. Status was everything. You know, I had the house, the car, the multiple degrees, like anything people wanted, I had those things and I had achieved it. And then I lost it all. Mm. And I lost it all to the point that I actually found myself sitting in the welfare office because I needed to try to figure out a way to feed my kids. Mm. All of this while, while still trying to rebuild a business. Mm. Um, and so here's what I noticed. And I'll tell you what happened as I was sitting there applying for public assistance um, at the time. What I realized is on the outside, I was saying, I want clients, I need clients, I'm going to do everything possible. But there was so much shame around losing my business and people finding out that I was going through the motions, but on the inside, I was screaming, don't pay me, I'm a fraud. Mm -hmm. And if anybody showed genuine interest, I would do pretty much anything within my power subconsciously. Of course, I wasn't, I didn't think I was consciously deciding in that moment to sabotage it like not calling people back, waiting a long time to call them back, not following through on things. And it was all because of this sense of shame. And so sitting there in that office, no matter how bad, how good the people wanted me to feel, like we, this is for people like you who are just falling on hard times. I, like I can feel the hair standing up on my skin, like all eyes were just on me. And I just felt so out of place and so ashamed. And I remember sitting there hearing this audible voice. I mean, to me, it was almost audible. Like, don't you dare give up. It's not over. And you absolutely need to fight for this. And so I didn't realize this at the time, but in hindsight, when I went back to look at how I teach and what I teach today and how I got to this point, I realized that in that moment, I had wrote myself what I like to call three permission slips. I had to give myself permission to do a few things in order for me to actually step out of the shame that I was in and step into my full potential and my full power. Um, and so it, that right now is the basis for everything I teach mm -hmm. the women that I work with in business. Um, sales, I think, is an incredible mirror for how we're showing up in life and what's going on with us. And for me, it's the gateway to everything that you want, right? Like looking at yourself and working on yourself as a gateway to everything that you want. And so many women come to me saying, hey, I need more sales or I need more clients and I want you to help me. And what we realize when in working them and over the years of working with a lot of women to do this work, that it's not the strategy that they need. 
Most of them have invested in strategy. They're brilliant. They're smart. They're badass at what they do. It's not strategy. It's the undercurrent. It's the subconscious thoughts going on in their mind. Um, until they get that part right, no amount of strategy is ever going to help them sell. And when they have these thoughts, like I had the shame around losing something or a client, um, you know, asking for a refund, whatever those things are, someone not getting the results that you, you know, promised or thought that they would get, that sends us into the space of I'm not enough, I'm not good enough, and it keeps you stuck and it siphons away at your self-esteem and so much more just little by little. Oh my God. I can totally relate to this because, um, you know, I've had multiple businesses. This is like third or fourth business. And I've gone through those deep, deep emotions of, um, you know, one of my businesses failed and thank God it was early, but it failed really quick. And it was like, oh my God, we just spent that much money and time working on that. And it was like an instant failure. And then, you know, I'm, I'm actually shutting down another business this year and it's, it's taken, it's like this deep journey into like understanding like, oh, actually, you know, it really was a success and there's no reason to feel shame, even though it didn't make as much money. It wasn't as big, blah, blah, blah. But, um, no, I love what you're saying about this, that it's really an undercurrent, you know, this is a huge part of it. Now, can you talk a little bit more about these permission slips and what that's all about? Cause I probably need one of them for myself. <laughs> I mean, Most definitely. I think for me, this was a really powerful transition. Um, most of the women I work with are like me. They're totally badass. They're brilliant. They're high achievers. They, they are used to winning and achieving success quickly. Like you said, like mm -hmm. you're, you're used to things working out for you. You know, they're the kind of women who wrote their papers the night before and still got A pluses. So they think business is supposed to still be okay. the same way. Right. Yeah. Big time. So, so let's share the permission slip. So the very first permission slip that I had to write myself was permission to trust my value. Mm -hmm. So remember I talked about losing everything. Now I'm talking about a business that was running at a half a million dollars at the time. I had employees. There were so many things going on. Um, lots of revenue coming in and out. And I had lots of disposable cash. Um, a lot of profit built into that business. So even though it wasn't like a multi-million dollar business, there was a lot of cash and profit um, that I was able to utilize for myself as a person um, inside of that business. And so losing it, um, and people are probably wondering, how did you lose it? Let me just share this really quick. I was in the mortgage industry. So that this was around 2007, 2008. So oh, no. living high on the hog, the market totally went bust. There was no way to even put a loan in any bank because the banks were getting shut down left and right. So if you didn't live through that, you won't really understand. But literally we would wake up and my friends would be like, I went to work today and there was a padlock on the door. My friends who work for banks, there was a padlock on the door. I can't even get my stuff out. We're closed immediately. That's how bad it was. Mm. So there was no fixing that. So we went through all of our savings, all of everything, just trying to hold on. And we just had to let go. So Trusting my value, what I had to remember is it didn't matter what I went through, that I lost everything. It didn't change the wisdom, the knowledge, who I was and what I brought to the table. And so the way that I like to explain this about giving yourself permission to trust your value, I wish I had a, like a dollar bill or a hundred dollar bill. So let's just imagine, let's imagine this little receipt here. I'm like, I have a hundred dollar bill right over here. I keep one lying next to my desk. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I usually have something. So let's just remember, let's just imagine that this is a hundred dollar bill, right? It says 500. So that's good. Let's just imagine that this is $500. Okay. Let's just imagine so it says 500. It says 500 cash. Isn't that cool? Let's just yeah, good. I love it. <laughs> so let's imagine that this is $500, right? And let's imagine that it's a, an actual $500 bill. Do those even exist? I don't know. A $500 bill. A monopoly. Well, it's suspension of disbelief. If I were to ball this $500 bill up, how much would it still be worth? Aha. Uh -huh. $500. $500. If I were to rip it a bit, what would it be worth? Well, that I don't know. <laughs> right? If I just put a little tear in it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Still $500. Even if I split it in half, I still have both pieces. I can tape it together, mm -hmm. right? I can duct tape it, Jimmy rig it, whatever. It's still worth $500. What if I stomped on it and just dragged it across the ground in the middle of the street on the asphalt? Oh my God. That changed its value. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Absolutely not. I love it. And so I had to give myself permission to trust the fact that 
the things that I had been through, my setbacks, my failures, my disappointments, they were not my kryptonite. They did not make me less valuable. And in fact, I feel like they make me more valuable. You know how things get better with age and time and because they have a few nicks and character to them, um, there's more value or even valuable things. When you hold them for a long period of time, they usually grow in value, right? What I had to learn is they weren't my kryptonite. They were my superpower. And I didn't lose anything because I lost those things. Mm. I actually gained more wisdom. And in fact, who I am today and what I'm able to do for my, my clients, the space that I'm able to hold for them, there's no way I would be able to do that without having gone through those things. Mm -hmm. Totally. I always remind myself of that. I'm like, you know what? I think I needed to fail at least three or four times to get to, you know, because now I'm probably like you. I'm like, I can save people from some of my failures. I'm like, no, you know what? Don't hire, you know, I did stupid things because I was, you know, dumb and didn't know what I was doing many years ago. But, you know, I hired an attorney in a different state than I lived in to create an S Corp and he did it all wrong. And it was such a minor mistake, but it was like years of annoyance. And I'm like, no, just hire a good attorney. Absolutely. Trust me and on it, this. It's higher and it's from this. a failure, right? It's yeah. from something that you totally like botched then and it was painful then yeah. to go through it. But now when, if you're mentoring somebody, it's like, look, I can tell you like there's a yeah. pothole here, step that way. And you can see the signs and signals yeah. a mile away. I so there's it. such value in that. So trust your value. I'm like, you're smart. You're brilliant. You're badass. Just mm -hmm. trust that. So really giving yourself permission. So here's number two. Ready for number two? Yeah, I love it. Um, so number two is permission to own my expert status or permission for you to own your expert mm -hmm. status. Give yourself permission to own the fact that you're an authority at what, what you do and you're an expert. And you're like, well, maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not, you know, Grant Cardone or whoever else. I'm not Oprah. I'm not all of these other people out there. I haven't arrived, right? These people we put on pedestals. Mm -hmm. So I have a story that I normally tell and I, I want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Who is the greatest boxer of all time? Muhammad Ali, but maybe not. Maybe that's a trick question. It's okay. It doesn't matter. Your <laughs> first, your first answer was yeah, Muhammad always Muhammad Ali. Ali. Yeah, it was on the tip. Like you just rolled. You didn't even pause. You're like, maybe it was Muhammad Ali. <laughs> yeah. So listen, this is important. This is important. This is why this is why I love this story so much. So remember, we're permission to own your expert status, right? I ask you who was the greatest boxer of all time. It doesn't matter who I ask that, where they're from, what country they're from. It doesn't really matter what age they are, what generation they're from, millennial, Gen X, Gen Y, whatever, baby boomers. They all say Muhammad Ali right off the bat. In fact, I just asked an Uber driver who had just come to this country and like he'd only been here 30 days. He said the same thing. Mm -hmm. My follow-up question to people is always this, who said he was the greatest? He did, probably. Yes, and absolutely. Yeah, yeah, he was really he, confident. Yes, he was. And in fact, he actually was quoted as saying, I said I was the greatest before I ever knew I was. Mm. So God. he began to declare, I'm the greatest, I'm the greatest. And to this day, in his legacy, he's no longer boxing. He's got health ailments. To this day, I can meet a stranger on the street, ask them who the greatest boxer of all time is. And it's argumentable, right? You, it's arguable. Mm -hmm. arguable. What word is that? Yeah, yeah. I was like, Mike Tyson, maybe? Right. <laughs> it's arguable. But because he repeated it over and over and over again, and then we began to repeat and get behind him in that rally cry, cry it's been passed from generation to generation. He declared his greatness. Mm. And so my invitation to you and the invitation I gave myself is to take a page out of Muhammad Ali's book and begin to declare your authority and your greatness over the problem that you solve for your ideal clients. Mm -hmm. Don't wait for an invitation to sit at the big kids table, to speak on the grand stages, to arrive at a certain place before you start to say, I'm the most badass person for the job. Mm -hmm. And so many people struggle with that. Like, who am I to do this? Who am I to even start a business? Who am I to coach someone? And I'm like, no, you, we all have something to offer. And it's true. You have to own it. You have to you know, really, it is that, that deep self-belief. And yes. you, know, you believe in yourself, others will. 
So Absolutely. I love it. I love this great analogy. <laughs> I always say like, you're the first sale you ever have to make. Mm. Sell yourself first. If you don't believe nobody else is ever going to believe, it mm. literally starts with you. And no one, who's going to give their money? Like, who would you give your money to? Let's talk about doctors, right? Who would you rather give your money to? The doctor that says, you know what? I see what's in there and, and we can probably go in there and get it out. Um, let's just give it a try. Mm. Or the one who says, oh, I've seen that a thousand times. I've done this over and over again. I know that I know that I know that I can help yeah. me get that. Let's yeah. get it and forget it. Exactly. Right? You have to show up in that way. So give yourself permission to own your expert status, to declare it loud, proud, vocal, and boldly. Mm, I love it. I love it. This is so awesome. Okay. What's the third permission slip? So my third permission slip that I had to give myself was actually, it's actually sell more, but I'm going to give it to you in a different way. Because you're like, okay, sell more. And sales people that feel all icky about sales. It's, it's just stop hiding. Stop hiding in plain sight and whispering in the marketplace and sell more. So remember, I said on the outside, it's like, oh, I want clients. But on the inside, I was like, please don't pay me. So I was sabotaging myself. And one of the ways that I was sabotaging myself is I would show up, but I would never really make an invitation to work with me. It was always like, give value, give value, give value, give value, right? Um, you know, create the long, big path to like people working with you. Start with the freebie and then we have to drip and you're like in that process forever, right? And it's mostly because we're trying to do the avoidance of sales and hope that people are just going to show up and work mm. with us. And so you don't want to hide in plain sight. I mean, you're visible, but people don't know what you do really you don't really make real bold invitations to work with you. You don't really talk about your programs and make an invitation. You're like, message me and we'll chat, <laughs> right? Um, and some people can do that if they've built huge audiences and people who are used to buying them. For, but for most of us, if you're just starting out, you need to ask for the business boldly. Mm -hmm. And you need to ask for the business more often than is comfortable for you. Um, and really get over this feeling that that sales is something that you do to people. It's really something that you do for them mm -hmm. so that they can get to their bigger vision, um, bigger desire that they have for their life, their business, their relationship, their body, whatever it is that you're selling, especially if you sell transformational services, it is your responsibility to offer them the way of escape. Mm -hmm. It is their right to choose. I love it. And I always tell people, you know, because I, I, I say this to my clients, I'm like, People don't know what you do unless you tell them. They don't know what you offer unless you make an offering, you know, make, a, make an offer. And it's so funny that this, this happens where they're like, huh? Like, I don't even get it. And they really get stuck in this. And I'm like, no, actually, one other thing you have to remember is today's day and age, everybody is so, we're so overloaded with information, emails, Facebook, Instagram, you know, work, kids, family. And I'm like, no, you actually have to follow up, you know, over and over and over and remind them over and over and over, you know, it's a different day and age. Like I'll sometimes it'll take me sometimes four or five emails to remember like, Oh yeah, it's my friend's birthday, you know, yes. like absolutely <laughs> basic thing. So I, I love that you're telling people this because um, I've seen it so many times. One of my clients started an email list and I was like, you know, what's weird. All your emails don't mention anything about what you do. Right. Or make an offer or an invitation. Yeah, to the yeah, next like, like Lee, <laughs> right? Stop hiding, become the leader, show up and tell people this is the way. <laughs> I love right? it. I love it. So, um, you know, tell people a little bit more about, you know, you, you do this six figure sales crash course, but you know, your approach to sales about, um, you know, how to sell more and how to, you know, ditch the self doubt and charge more. Like what's that all about? And what tips do you have for, let's say someone who's just building their business and they, they're probably struggling in sales because I know everybody struggles in sales. So the biggest thing is like really becoming comfortable with the word sales and selling. Mm -hmm. selling. Mm -hmm. If there's any cognitive dissonance, any charge or feeling to the word sales or selling when you're like, I'm not really selling. I'm having conversations with people. And then if they buy, they buy. If you're trying to tell yourself that story, you may be comfortable with it, let's say at a thousand dollar price point, but when you raise your prices to 5,000 or 10,000 or 50,000, you're going to have issues. Mm -hmm. Sales is sales. Um, and I always tell people this sales sales. Let's say you're on the freeway, right? You're on the freeway and a big rig truck is coming, right? It's coming down the freeway. You're standing in the middle of the road and you're sitting there going, it's not a truck. It's not a truck. It's not a truck. You're going to get mm -hmm. smashed. Right. 
Oh my God. So it's the same thing with sales. If you're constantly telling yourself it's not sales, it's not sales, it's not sales, it's enrollment, it's service, it's it, and it is all of those things. Yeah. But I want to submit to you that it can be both. It can be sales and enrollment. It can be sales mm -hmm. and service. It can be sale, selling to people is not a bad thing. And the, the moment that you can integrate that into your body, that by me selling to someone, I'm giving them the way to mm -hmm. get to what they desire. And I'm okay with that. You can sell at any price point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love this. I mean, this is a really good take on sales and it is, it's a, a mental paradigm shift. And I agree with you completely. Like you have to own it, but own that you're really actually out to help. You know, this really is like, like I wouldn't be where I'm at today if my, you know, multiple coaches didn't sell me at some point. Right. right. Like, and I, you know, I always tell people, I'm like, I didn't even know a business coach existed. And I wish, I wish someone had sold me back when I had my other two businesses that kind of failed. Because <laughs> it would have, I was like, oh my God, if I had only known back then, but you know, thankfully better late than never. And um, so what is the six figure sales crash course that you're giving away in the email, which people can get for free in the link in the email? Yeah. Yeah. So absolutely. I'm so excited about this thing. I created it earlier this year and it has been um, I, I believe it's some of the most powerful work that I've ever done. Mm. And um, people that have taken this course for free, it's, it's, five, it's a five-part series. You get five videos. Um, people have made as much as $28,000 doing this free crash course. Um, what I'm doing is I'm taking you through five powerful sessions and I'm showing you exactly how to bring six figures into your business anytime you desire. So before the end of this year, if you wanted to, and what I'm sharing with you is the formula that my clients use and that I use um, to do things like do hundred K, hundred thousand dollars in sales in only 90 days, um, book $83,000 in sales in, in under 30 days, so many different things. And it's a mini course. And what it's about, it's about you thinking bigger and bringing in six figures into your business fast, not in five years, not in three years, really challenging yourself to be bold and do the bold actions that it takes and get clarity around um, your messaging, your offer, creating an offer that your ideal clients will love that will bring you in that six figures, um, how to ditch doubt and fear and prepare yourself to bring in six figures into your business mm -hmm. fast. Um, simple ways to get sales calls booked on your calendar so that you can sell that offer and exactly what to do to hear yes when you have a conversation with someone about the offer that you're creating. Mm. Wow, this is super powerful. I'm going to watch this myself. <laughs> I mean, you can never have too much sales training. That's what I think. I'm like, there's always a way to improve and there's always, you know, this is such a good, um, you know, paradigm shift around sales that you teach. I, I'm really glad. I'm really glad you're teaching this because yeah, there's no need to wait three to five years to start making money. It's all about allowing it in too. Like, Absolutely. And I'm sure I know you cover this because we all know that self-doubt is getting in the way of all the success. So tell people a little bit more about where they can find you, what you offer, anything upcoming this year, next year. So I'm mostly hanging out in Facebook land. That's, that's where you can find me. I have an amazing um, Facebook group. If you download the Six Figure Crash Course, it'll lead you to the Facebook group. The way that I use my Facebook group is for people who are going through my free content to get coaching on the free content that they're using. So you want to come hang out with us in there. Um, I have a book that I wrote called The Power of Permission, where I walk you through these three permission slips. You can find that on Amazon just by looking the book up or looking me up um, so that you can read through these permission slips and look at how can you apply this in your life and your business right away. Um, I think the most incredible thing that I have coming up soon is I'm going to be doing a challenge that I'm going to be pushing people through called level up. So when you come and join me on Facebook, hang out in my world, you'll start to see the level up challenge come up in the next couple of weeks. You want to join me for that because I'm going to push you beyond your comfort zone. I'm going to press, push you to press your limits to go beyond where you would normally go to show up differently so that you can welcome in those big money months and increase your capacity to receive, but also be seen mm -hmm. by those people who are willing to pay you for your services. I love it. It sounds like so much fun. I love a good challenge. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Shamika, thank you so much for sharing all your wisdom and your incredible stories. I mean, you're just proof that, you know what, don't give up. Anybody can do it, you know, at the toughest of times. And yes, I completely lived through that crazy economy crash and the first one before that and the one before that. 
And um, yeah, you know, I love that you're, you're a true success and true, um, you know, inspiration to everybody watching. Oh, thank you, Beth, so much. Thanks for having me here and allowing me to share. I'm, I'm excited to get this out to people, but I appreciate you so much for the invitation. Thank you. Thank you. And everybody, be sure to get your free gift, the Six Figure Sales Crash Course, in today's email. Just click the link and it's all yours. Shmika, I will see you very soon. And everybody, there's more interviews tomorrow on the True Path Entrepreneur. I will see you then.